My name is Sister Kathy Bilski. I'm a member of the Sisters of St. Benedict of Ferdinand, Indiana. I'd like to talk a little bit about fasting and prayer and what I've learned from this most recent Lent and COVID-19. In his rule, St. Benedict urges us to add a little extra service to the normal pattern of prayer and self-denial during Lent. He speaks of adding some private prayer and abstinence from food, drink, needless talking, and even sleep. Benedict further suggests that we offer these extras of our own free will and the joy of the Holy Spirit. During this immediate past Lent, we learned about other ways of fasting and doing without, and other ways of offering prayer. Initially, most of these forms of self-denial were not of our own choosing, like social distancing, keeping our hands away from our eyes, nose, and mouth. Our health and the health of loved ones, and even the well-being of strangers propelled us into this self-denial. But the grace of these impositions is doing them with the joy of the Holy Spirit, doing them with love and in service to and for others changes the difficulty into a blessing. I can kneel and pray, which is good, but I can also offer whatever is happening in life as a prayer to God. And the offering need not always be a major adversity. Maybe I didn't get to follow the 2020 NCAA trip to the Final Four, but the spring flowers and the flowering shrubs have been spectacular around the monastery. Rather than sitting in front of a TV, I've had more time to look at God's own beauty around me. I could take pictures and send them via email or text to others who could not so easily get outside. For me, I came to see not rubbing my eyes or any place on my face as a very real modern fasting. My nose may actually itch, but there are no drastic repercussions if I don't scratch. I may be uncomfortable for a short time, but isn't fasting often uncomfortable? We've been asked to fast from some kinds of social contact. A difficult way to fast? Yes, and more difficult for some people than for others. Suddenly, fasting from candy seems so easy compared to distancing from loved ones. It's not that God wants us to suffer, but we can use the real situations as an offering of penance and prayer. While God doesn't require this penance, it's a way of intentionally inviting God into our everyday experiences. While we are not gathering for the normal religious rituals, our prayer opportunities have not lessened. We've been encouraged to wash our hands often and thoroughly. Various websites have promoted this vital practice as a potential prayer practice. There's nothing wrong with singing happy birthday twice to be sure the prescribed time has passed. But how much more beneficial to say a favorite prayer for at least the recommended 20 seconds. All prayer, all talking with God is good. So let's end our time together with a prayer from Nan Merrill's book, Meditations and Mandalas. And so we pray. Awaken, O oh friends, radiate the light you are. Do not let fear keep you from the truth of your being, nor illusions veil the innate beauty of your soul. Awaken, know that you are a holy chalice of light and love, for the divine guest dwells within you. You are the holy temple of the beloved, you are the light of the world. Shine. Thank you.